Good morning, friends. Hello, everyone. It's um, about 8.15, our time, um, and I am in Redding, California, in Ca uh, the Pacific Northwest. Where are you joining me from? I hope you'll comment today. This is the second to the last day of our devotion for the summer, and it's August 30th. If we do the, I have a, an appointment tomorrow morning, so I'm not sure how I'm going to fit the devotion in at what time, but if we do tomorrow, we're done. Gosh. All of Joshua, all of Judges, and then all of Ruth. And we've been going at this for at least three months in the Passion Translation. And this book is what we've been using. And uh, we are in chapter 3 of the book of Ruth and we read up into verse 6 on Saturday and we're going to start there. We're on page 132 if you have the book and we're going to go through chapter 3 today and just pull out a few items here before I head off to school with my daughter. Okay, so here we are. We're in the story of Ruth and Boaz. She has just um, been instructed by Naomi to go to Boaz and to lay at his feet and we talked all about what that meant on Saturday if you didn't you need to go back and catch that replay and um, what that means to lay at the finished work of Christ and lay at his feet and um, we're going to proceed from there so it says <clears throat> that evening Ruth went down to the threshing floor and did all her mother-in-law had told her to do and after his evening meal, Boaz was in a good mood. He went to lie down at the far end of the grain pile and fell fast asleep. Ruth quietly tiptoed over to him, uncovered his feet, and lay down. She did what her mother-in-law told her to do. It took a lot of courage. This book is all about courage. And um, this kind of courage is going to bring her into a love relationship that she's never known before. Around midnight, Boaz was startled and he awoke. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? Boaz asked. I'm Ruth, your servant girl, she answered. Spread the corner of your garment over me because you are a close relative by marriage, one who is my kinsman redeemer. This theme of being a kinsman redeemer, we talked about on Saturday, the term is used um, to mean the one that has bought us back, but we're going to explore that a little bit more today with the word redeem, what it means to redeem. And Jesus has bought us back, and he is our kinsman redeemer. Um, you are a close relative by marriage, one who is my kinsman redeemer. And... Um, that is, you have the right to marry me. That's what she was trying to say to him. Ruth knew who she was. She boldly requested grace from Boaz. We too can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask of Jesus what is given to us by our covenant relationship that we're in with him. So he said to her, Dear woman, may Yahweh bless you for this act of kindness you're showing me exceeds the kindness that you've shown to Naomi and he recognizes that what she's do doing for him right now is more than what she even did for her mother-in-law. You didn't search for a young man to marry, either rich or poor. My daughter, don't worry. I love that, don't worry. <laughs> I just want to stop there for a minute because I've been worried. I'm fighting worry. I don't know about you. I promise to do everything you ask because everyone knows you're a brave woman of noble character. We want to be this brave woman. This woman, Ruth, is a brave woman of noble character. It's true that I am a kinsman redeemer, but you have a closer kinsman redeemer than I. When I read that word closer, it reminded me of the scripture in Proverbs 18:24 that we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother and that person is Jesus. Some of us do have friends as well who are just as if they were family. They, 
stay with us through thick and thin. I yearn for friendships like that, don't you? Don't you need people who can sit with you in your pain and sit with you in your triumph and celebrate you and you them? That is the beauty of friendship. Stay here tonight. Oh, right. So he says, you have a closer kinsman redeemer than I. He knows that there's somebody that could possibly beat him to the punch, so to speak, and be the one that she marries. Instead, he said, stay here tonight, and I will protect you. In the morning, we'll see if he's willing to redeem you. So he's inviting her. He's not telling her, you know, you need to go. This is inappropriate. He's saying, stay here, and in the morning, we'll find out if he's willing to redeem you. The word redeem there, this is what I wanted to get to, actually means marry. And um, I just thought about what that means, that we are married to Jesus, that we are his bride, and that we're coming uh, into that relationship with him more and more as he's going to be bringing us home at some point, and we will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So to redeem is the same as to marry. And I thought, what is it? What is it that brought us or brings us into that place of redemption? And I was looking up a couple of scriptures. Um, let me see if I can get them again. Uh, Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. And then in Revelation 5, 9. Uh, we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And if you've changed those words, redeem or redeemed, we are married, Mary, it, it's something I've never really thought of before, but we are um, covenanted into marriage through the blood of Jesus. And it reminded me of, you know, like when you get your marriage license that says you and your spouse are married. That maybe that I just pictured in my mind that maybe the, the script was written in blood and that it was it is the connection it is the covenant it is the redeeming power the marrying power that we have with Christ is the blood and I just I would just want to invite the Lord to bring us more revelation about that sometime you know, when he chooses, but that was just my first kind of peek into those two words being exchanged. It says here at the top of page 133, if he refuses to redeem you or refuses to marry you, purchase you, marry you, then I promise as surely as Yahweh lives, I will, so sleep here until morning. So she can rest easy. She knows one way or the other she's going to be taken care of. So Ruth stayed near Boaz's feet that night, and she awoke before it was light enough for anyone to recognize her. Boaz thought, no one must know that a woman visited me at the threshing floor. As Ruth was about to leave, Boaz said to her, here, bring me the cloak you're wearing and hold it open. So she was wearing a cloak, and it was sufficient enough to carry what he's about to give her, which was... Um, she held it open and he poured six measures of barley into it and he then helped place it on her head to carry and she went back to Bethlehem that's so much barley and I actually don't know how she possibly carried it I think it said in the notes there that, that was equal to 50 pounds on her head when when Ruth returned to her mother-in-law, Naomi, she, uh, Naomi asked her, How did it go, dear daughter? How did Boaz receive you? And Ruth told Naomi everything that he did for her, and she added, Boaz gave me all of this barley. It's like a wedding gift, you know, saying, You must not go home empty-handed without a gift for your mother-in-law. Naomi answered, My daughter, wait here until you see what happens. Boaz will not rest until he's finished doing what he promised he would do today. So she's, she is waiting for the redemption. She's waiting for the marriage, like we're waiting for the marriage supper of the Lamb. And yet there's a confidence that she knows that she is in the right place. 
And, and there's a resting that comes out of that, the work that Jesus does on our behalf, the going as Boaz is going to see if he's the one that should redeem her. All of that stuff that's being taken care of behind the scenes, we can rest in. <coughs> Let's see here. Um, so that's the end of chapter three. And that's all that I think that um, I wanted to bring out in chapter three today. I think this is a shorter devotion time than normal, but as I was saying at the beginning, uh, tomorrow I have an appointment in the morning that might not allow me to come on until a little bit later. So, but I'm hoping that we'll finish at the book of Ruth tomorrow and Tuesday and then we'll be done with our summer study. Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. And thank you. Hello, Caitlin. I see you're on here. Thank you for coming on with me today and may the Lord give you a resting place in him today as you wait on him and his, his redemption draws nigh. It really is close. And um, we love him so much. We wait expectantly and we, we lie at his feet as Ruth did. All right. Blessings to you. Bye-bye. Have a good day.